In this module, we move on to looking at the fundamental questions of money and interest. And in this module, we're going to be focusing primarily on a uh, presentation which goes through a fair bit of theory. And so those of you of a very practical bent may find this um, not as useful as working out maybe your interest rate calculator or doing a DCF spreadsheet. However, if we're going to be understanding where the financial world is going, which is very important if we're going to have half reliable forecasts, it's very important to understand the nature of the finance markets and all of the finance markets ultimately sit on an understanding of interest rates. This module then gives you the opportunity to go through the different theories that have been developed both in finance and economics to explain the way that interest rates work, our interest rate markets work, why it is that we have high interest rates sometimes and low interest rates at other times. And we'll find that there's a handful of theories uh, that have been suggested and also a number of theorists, a number of economists and other thinkers who have contributed to this question of interest rate theory over the years. Most surprisingly, we're going to discover that after we strip away what appears to be fairly obvious things like concerns for risk, and so a high risk loan is going to have a higher interest rate than a low risk loan. Once we take things like that away, what we find is that there is a slice of the interest rate which tends to be ultimately unexplained. At least unexplained as anything more um, scientific or uh, mechanical that has a cause than simply the habit of lenders to expect to be able to charge interest and borrowers to expect to have to pay it. This is rather peculiar that the very heart of the most important part of the financial world and therefore the economy, there is really no theoretical justification. And those justifications that have been proposed, especially in the last century or so, when economics has become very systematic and attempted to become scientific and empirical, the last hundred years of theory has actually failed to fill that gap. From there, we stray a little into looking at the views on the charge of interest, and particularly that part of the interest rate which is unexplained by things like risk and time frame and so on. And what we find is that a number of different cultures um, and um, historical positions have taken a very unusual view, certainly by comparison to our world, and that is that they consider this unexplained part of our interest rate is in fact something that should not be permitted. Today, the only major place we find this is in the Islamic world, where according to Islamic tradition, the Muslims consider that charging pure interest, that's risk-free interest, is something which is unethical or even more severely immoral. And they're able to build an entire financial system and operate banks without charging interest at all. That really provides a very interesting counterpoint to Western practice. And one which with the rise of uh, economic power in the Islamic world is worth any business student being familiar with and certainly to at least test whether living in the Islamic financial world may be better or worse than living in our world, and the results may surprise you a little. So we have a fair range of issues here from standard Western financial theory back to Islamic economics. So I hope you enjoy this topic. I think the value of it will become more apparent to you as you move through your professional lives and as the years reveal the ups and downs of our financial fortunes into the future.